This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are getting into crunch time for both the NBA and the NHL for their respective regular seasons. We haven't gotten to talk a lot about those two sports recently with the college basketball tournament sucking up a lot of helium. So it's time to get Tom Vecchio back into the show, get his thoughts on tonight's slates in both the NBA and NHL, and let you know where he sees value over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Saunas. I am a managing editor of Digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Uh, you can find his work over at FanDuel Research. He, of course, is the host of the Daily ISO on the FanDuel Research podcast feed. Tom, happy Tuesday to you. How's it going? I'm doing great. Yeah, uh, super busy time. MLB starting. I uh, covered that last week when I was here uh, for a couple episodes. Like you said, crunch time for these two sports. We are winding down to the most important games of the season. We need some playoffs. I'm ready to go. Uh, how is MLB going for you so far? Oh, uh, it was pretty good. Uh, Yanks are off through a 5 0 start, which I can't complain about. I, I will say I haven't been against them a few times just because it's baseball and I expect them to lose at some point, uh, but I'm not going to complain about them winning. Uh, I had a Soto over one and a half total bases bet last night, and I joked to Austin Cass, our colleague on on Slack, that a four walk game wasn't coming. I think he only walked twice. So yeah. uh, we weren't quite there, but you know. It, it was bound to happen. Right. I, I cursed him to have zero base hits as a result of that. So it's my fault. It always is. I, I accept and understand that for sure. We're going to talk to him about the NBA, NHL for today. Get his thoughts on both those and let you know where he sees value for tonight at FanDuel Sportsbook. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Big week here, of course, because the Final Fours have now been settled. We'll be talking about both the men's and women's side of things with Ed Feng on Thursday. So make sure you subscribe to Covering the Spread to get that as it goes live wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also find the show on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Of course, Tom alluded to uh, baseball stuff. If you want some daily baseball recommendations, I am giving those over on the solo shot as well. That's on the FanDuel Research podcast feed. Talked about a couple of bets I like for Dinger Tuesday for today and also pair of strikeout props I like for tonight along with the core DFS plays over on FanDuel. Find all that on the FanDuel Research podcast feed and, of course, on FanDuel TV Plus as well. Speaking of Dinger Tuesday, dingers, blasts, moonshots, whatever you want to call them, everyone loves home runs with FanDuel's Dinger Tuesdays. You can love them even more. That's right. Dinger Tuesdays are back for another season on American. America's number one sports book. Just bet on a player to hit a home run, and FanDuel will give you $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit during that game. As if you needed another reason to love the long ball. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. Bonus issued is now with trouble bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus $25 per game. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Over to ccpg.org slash Jack Connecticut, 1 800 9 with it in Indiana, 1 800 522 4700 for Zacchaeus Gambling Health.com in Kansas, 1 877 770 Stop in Louisiana. Visit MD Gambling Health Org in Maryland, 1 800 Gambler.net in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call one 877 hope and y or text hope and y in New York. Now, Tom, we've been focusing on other stuff. So we haven't got to talk NBA for a while now, but it is the thick of the regular season with just a couple of weeks left and the play in and the playoff pictures are now coming into focus. Any value for you in the futures market right now, as things start to ramp up here? Yeah. So under the, to make the playoffs section, 
you know, this obviously gives us options for making the playoffs and the play in. So the play in means they just have to finish in the bottom where they have to finish, you know, 79, 10, make the playoffs means they actually have to make the playoffs either top six or win. So if you look to the East play in tournament odds, I actually like the heat to make the play in at minus 130. And right now they're sitting in the seventh seed. They're one game behind Indiana. And Indiana has a little bit of an easier schedule to close out the season. And if all things are equal and they already have a game lead and they have, you know, this, uh, this easier schedule, the, it's not like the Heat have no motivation. It's just at a certain point when they're playing this many games in this few days to end the season, I'll simply just side with the team that has the advantage as of right now. Now, they do play one more time to close out the season. These, these teams split uh, their first two matchups. So one, that final game could be the tiebreaker game. So we're talking about like razor thin margins. Are they do they have the same record? What's the the tiebreakers after all these sorts of things? But at the end of the day, if we if everything's equal, the team with the easier strength of schedule should just prevail at a certain point. It's not like the Pacers have no motivation. Of course, they want to make the playoffs. So I will take the Pacers to make the playoffs and the Heat to make the play in. Very very minor details to end the season. Uh, the Heat right now, minus 130 to make the East play in tournament. As far as making uh, the playoffs, um, obviously the, the Pacers are listed there because they'd probably be in a pretty good spot if they were to make the play in to make the playoffs as well. But you can't take the Heat at minus 130 to make the play in. If you think that uh, the Pacers may lag down the stretch and the Heat get hot, Pacers are 2-1 to one to be in the play in tournament as well over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Yeah, Let's, really, really straightforward. I think it's just like, it's a fun time of the year because like, the head-to-head -head matchups actually really do matter of what happened in November. And now we're getting to the point of like, oh, that game, you know, it's a Tuesday game. Why does that matter? Like now they matter. Yeah, for sure. They they definitely do. Okay. Let's take a look at a couple of TNT games for tonight, Tom. We got Thunder versus 76ers, Mavs Warriors. Uh, thought for a second we might get Joel Embiid for the 76ers game. Not quite back to return yet. So it does lose a tiny bit of its luster. But let's talk about that Thunder versus 76ers game first, Tom. Uh, right now, the Thunder five and a half point favorites. Any value for you in that game right now, FanDuel Sportsbook? That's starting off with Jalen Williams for the Thunder over four and a half assists at sitting minus 102. He is technically listed as questionable. He hasn't missed too many recent games. I'm expecting him to play. There's a clear lack of player props in this game overall because SGA, Maxi, and Williams, they're all listed as questionable tonight. Now, SGA missed a couple games. He played the other night against the Knicks. Maxi, they obviously need him to play with no, with no Embiid still. So a, a few moving parts in this game, but Jalen Williams is playing like a solid facilitator role with or without SGA in the lineup. He has, he's averaging 5.1 assists over his last 10. We should see some back and forth action in this game. I would, you know, trend towards the under, but still a, a nice competitive game. Both teams need to play and win. And that's something I always like to focus in on at this point in the season. There's not many matchups that we get, especially on tonight's slate, where both teams have motivation to play and win. The Lakers are 12 point favorites against the Raptors who are on a 13 game losing streak. The Bucks are 14 point favorites against the Wizards. Like we actually have a game where the game environment should be strong because both teams are fighting for seeding. Now, it's different types of seeding with the OKC at the top of the West and Philly trying to secure their spot in the play-in. But that means we should have consistent minutes. And that's what I want to ultimately focus in on. Players with consistent minutes should have a, a tighter range of outcomes. It shouldn't be a vast range of outcomes because we should be seeing teams operate in a rational manner, essentially. So if SGA is out, that's only a boost for Williams. But even when SGA has been in, Williams has been solid. So let's say that SGA is ruled in later today. Would you still take this then knowing that, or is this based on the possibility that SGA does wind up sitting? If he's in, that's great because the offense should just have a higher sure. expectation, higher scoring ceiling overall because he's awesome. And he sure. really should be in the MVP conversation. He probably doesn't get there just because it's Jokic and Luka doing their thing, but he's maybe that third or fourth option. But if he's in, the offense is going to be operating at full capacity. Okay. And if he's out, Williams has the expanded offensive usage. So either way, it's okay. So Jalen Williams over four and a half assists, minus one or two. That's the 76ers versus Thunder in the first TNT game. Second TNK, TNT game, as mentioned, is the Mavericks taking on the Warriors. Pretty tight spread here. One point spread yeah. in favor of the Warriors. What are you seeing in this one, Tom? That's going to Kyrie Irving under 23 and a half points, sitting at minus 113. Both teams are a little bit hot right now. They're picking up some wins. Warriors are... In, in like absolute crunch time, like you said at the beginning, like this is crunch time for them. The Rockets have been super hot. The Warriors right now have a two-game lead in, as the 10th seed. 
and Houston is fighting to get that last play in spot. So the Warriors have to lock things down on defense. And we have seen that because they are playing much, much slower throughout the regular season. They averaged 103 and a half possessions per game, but over their last three, they're down to 97.6. They are decisively playing slower, trying to control the game. And Dallas is also playing a little bit slower. They were up at 103.3. They're down to 99.8. So teams are playing slower at this portion of the year because they're trying to control things. They don't want to get up and down and run. So fewer possessions, tighter defense, both teams fighting for, again, play-in slash playoff seating. And that just trends towards unders. Now, the Warriors actually have improved their defense dramatically from where it was in like December and January. And I'll simply side with the under. Despite being a high-volume shooter and Irving can be extremely efficient, I want to I want to focus in on how these teams have been trending defensively and what should be a playoff type environment tonight. A little bit of lack of scoring, a little, little bit gritty. Wouldn't be surprised to see Draymond maybe pick up a flagrant foul or whatever it might be. But like a hard nosed game tonight is what we should be seeing. So right now the market for Irving is twenty five and a half points, uh, minus one thirteen. Does that movement concern you at all? Oh, jumped up from twenty three to twenty five in uh-huh. ten minutes. A little concerning. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's 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 the wind horse meme. Why would it do that? <laughs> yeah, why? It's two thirty. It's still a one point spread in two thirty two. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I might still buy into the under. Okay. I think it's being inflated artificially. Yeah, I would still buy into the under. And, so, and this, this is the one thing I wanted to make note of of Embiid since he wasn't going to play. But the one thing I would say about Embiid is if he gets ruled in for one of their next two games, yeah. I actually have a ton of interest in taking Embiid unders right before lock. Right. Because if the, the number gets steamed up throughout the day, I want to start taking unders after everyone's the public has already bet on the overs. Right. And with Irving, we might be seeing a bit of that here. The, we do send, tend to see more action on overs than unders in general. So if you're looking for unders, you can often find some good value. And for a tip, you always do run the va- the risk that like someone is on the under and it does move it uh, that direction. So there is risk in doing that as well. But um, you're typically more likely to find value in unders and overs uh, as you get closer to tip. So yeah. that's why I'd phrase that there. Irving right now, 25 and a half points. Under is minus 113. Maybe do a quick Twitter search before uh, you lock this one in to make sure nothing has changed here too tangibly to make sure that is still good to go. But uh, if it's just moving moving up for organic reasons uh, to 25 and a half, Tom does like the under uh, 25 and a half minus 113. Plenty of other games for tonight as well, Tom. Anything else stand out to you across these seven other games uh, in the NBA for tonight? Yeah, that's going to Donovan Mitchell for the Cavs over 22 and a half points. They're at the Utah Jazz. His revenge game. game. Yeah. Uh, minus 120. Uh, Mitchell recently returned from uh, a number of different injuries, but most recently it was a, as a nasal fracture. So he's wearing this face guard, this face shield that players have been known to wear. And since he's been back, he's played 32 and 30 minutes, which is great. He was, uh, you know, had some quotes after their most recent game against Denver, very frustrated about how the, the team is operating. But he shot 4 of 13 and 3 of 12 from the field in these two most recent games. So, A, the field goal attempts, just the volume of them are low for Mitchell, who should be in the high teens, if not 20s. And he's obviously, you know, very, very inefficient. So I, I talked about him on the Daily Iso, like, maybe it's just the mask bothering him. Like, players have been known to, like, they can play well, but, like, maybe just take some time. He's a little bit uncomfortable. He also missed a number of games. Blah, 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 like all these things. But ultimately, 22 and a half points for Mitchell is a very fair line. And it's also an extremely easy matchup going up against Utah, who's sitting a bunch of players. John Collins is out. Laurie Markin is out. Jordan Clarkson is out. Like all these players are out for Utah because they're out of it. So I'm, I want to buy low on Mitchell for what should be a high volume shooter who should see his efficiency rise back up. He's not going to shoot three of 12 or whatever on a nightly basis. So it's the mask bothering him. He's getting back into the flow of the offense, whatever it might be. He's their guy, and he should be pushing to 25, if not 30 points every night. I think we need an investigation about uh, the the Mitchell mask or masks in general. I know there used to be like the Kelly Olenek uh, bun versus hair down splits. Uh, he did better with the bun versus others. Uh, that one might have less of an impact than a mask might just kind of hypothetically throwing that out there, you know, scientifically, but uh, Mitchell 23 and a half points right now over is minus one Oh six in his revenge game against the Utah jazz. Tom is liking that one as well. Let's just focus now and talk about the NHL for tonight. Eight game slate there. Let's start things off with the traditional markets, Tom, anything you like across the NBA or the NHL, as far as puck lines, money lines, totals, anything like that. 
Uh, the last game on the slate, the Canucks and Golden Knights under five and a half. And I will say for tonight's slate, we have a lot of five and a halves, which, you know, if this was, you know, January 2nd, December 2nd, these would not be five and a half. These would, yeah. most of them these would be six and a half. Uh, but under five and a half for Canucks and Vegas, this is a potential first round playoff matchup, depending if Vegas can hold on to the three seed. Teams are playing super tight, especially in the past two weeks. Both of these teams have been absolutely phenomenal on defense. The Canucks are number one in the league, allowing 1.31 goals per 60 minutes in 5v5 situations over the last two weeks. And Vegas is number five at 1.54. So these teams have really tightened up on defense. You know, this is more of a priority game for Vegas just because of where they are in the standings. The Canucks should have the number one seed in their division locked up. But if Vegas falls, this could be a first round matchup for the wild card. A lot of different permutations. So these teams have to be playing things tight. Um, you know, lack of shot attempts, lack of scoring, you name it, like a, a playoff type matchup is what we should be seeing for both sports in a lot of these contests moving forward. All right. So that one is at five and a half right now, minus one of six. I will say it was kind of jarring when you said uh, under five and a half at minus one of six, just because like it just feels so low. But like you yeah. said, like it's just a different, different intensity this time of year than what we have early on, especially for two teams that have, you know, longer term ambitions and hope to be playing hockey for until June. Yeah, I like we are in for some, I don't want to say like gross games, but like I, I kind of like those. Like that's what we should be seeing from Nick's Heat tonight. That over under 207. But like I feel like with with this, it's not it's not it's like a an old school SEC game where it's right. like the total's low because the intensity is high and it's good defense, not because right. like it's sloppy or anything like that. Right. That's what I that's like that's the point I want to make. Like I yeah. I, I want like I always say like ugly basketball or ugly hockey. And I don't mean it from like, a, oh, the teams are bad and they don't know how to operate. I mean it from yeah. like the intensity is ratcheted up and we are going to see like the true ceiling of these teams from the best ways that they show. And that doesn't necessarily mean offense. It means defense. It means like operating things normal, like the best way that they possibly can. Right. That's what I find interesting. Right. And I think that's different with hockey too, where like, Good defense is a lot more exciting in hockey than pretty much any other sport. And it can be fun in basketball, but like the end result is probably a missed shot. And like, I'd rather watch like a six save or like lockdown defense in the NHL than anywhere else. So like, right. I'll take a low total in the NHL pretty happily. We get that here with the Canucks and Golden Knights under five and a half is minus one Oh six. What about player props to the NHL for tonight, Tom? So tonight's slate is tough because we have these low totals. If we're not going to see a lot of scoring, that means we not, we not going to see a lot of goals, a lot of shot attempts. The one spot that I like, at least as, as of now would be Minnesota. Brock Faber for Minnesota over one and a half shots minus minus one twenty two. Uh, he really should be in the conversation for rookie of the year. If it wasn't for Connor Bedard this year, he would probably be one of the top three finalists. Uh, Minnesota born and bred Brock Faber playing for the Minnesota wild. Uh, great defender for them. He's on the first defensive pairing, uh, second power play unit. Uh, he's a good volume shooter. He's not a massive volume shooter, 18 shots over his last 10. He blocks uh, some shots. He gets a little bit of offense going. It's an easy matchup versus the Ottawa Senators. Minnesota is not eliminated from the playoffs. They're not, they're on clearly on the outside looking in, but if they want any shot of pushing towards the last wild card spot, this is the matchup that they have to win. They can't be giving away these points. That means they should be pushing the offense forward. So it actually should be a, an exciting offensive game for Minnesota at a basically any or higher than any other team on the slate is the point that I'm making. That number for Faber right now, over one and a half shots is minus 122. Uh, I think we got to feed off the good vibes of Paige Becker is winning last night because that's a very Minnesotan thing. She's from Minnesota too. Brock Faber from Maple Grove uh, went to the U of M. So it's it's just Minnesota vibes in general. I told I think you, Minnesota that's born and bred. He's playing for Minnesota. Like, yeah. But he's like, he's, he's like, I, I always care about the native Minnesotans. Like, I don't care who's played for the Gophers. Like, that's fine, you know. Uh, but like, I, I want the native Minnesotans. Faber is that. And that's why I'll claim Paige Beckers, too. Is She didn't play for the U of M, but at least she's from there. So either way, it's Minnesota vibes, Tom. It's Minnesota season. And we got to take Brock Faber over one and a half goals, minus 122. It's not because of the analysis Tom gave. It's because he is Minnesotan. That's the only reason we're going with Brock Faber for tonight. 
All righty, that is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Again, the recommendations from Tom Brock, favor of one and a half shots, minus 122, Connects Golden Knights, under five and a half, minus 106, Donovan Mitchell, over 23 and a half points, minus 106. Check on Kyrie Irving to make sure nothing funky is happening there, under 25 and a half, minus 113. And then Jalen Williams, over five, four and a half assists, that is minus 102. Tom, appreciate the time from you as always. Uh, good luck to you tonight and enjoy all the basketball and the hockey. Thanks for having me. If you want some more thoughts from Tom on tonight's NBA slate, check that out on the Daily ISO on the FanDuel Research Podcast feed and FanDuel TV+. Plus. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can follow FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you. Their bets across Tuesday. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 